Lovely October. A time for sweaters, pumpkin spice, and apple picking. It's also the time for our favorite holiday. I, of course, am referring to Michael Landon's birthday. To celebrate accordingly, let's take a look at what is still his most widely recognized character and the evolution of that character over 14 seasons on Bonanza. Little Joe Cartwright got his much-beloved and totally preferred nickname by being the youngest of the three Cartwright sons when the show began. It is also joked more than once that the moniker was handed to him because the brother who was born before him was just that big. Either way, the name stuck, and sometimes proved to be a hindrance in his desire to be seen as more than just the kid of the family. Ironically, it was his oldest brother Adam who referred to him by this name the least out of everyone. I say it's ironic because it was Adam who Joe had the most complex relationship with. For more on that, go back and watch my video on the subject. Much of the time, Adam was the one who complied with the request that Joe made when introducing himself to anyone new to call him just Joe. Perhaps it's this, or maybe my understanding of his plight as a youngest child myself, that I have never really referred to him as Little Joe when talking about him or the show itself. The Just Joe rule is one I, too, comply with. Everyone that I talk to who was alive when the show aired always calls him Little Joe and even display their knowledge of what the show is by saying something along the lines of, Oh, Little Joe! Yeah, I know that show. I do find it interesting, under the circumstance of his own preference, that so many of his friends and people outside the family still call him Little Joe for a pretty long time in the series' run. I can understand older members of Virginia City doing it, and him not correcting them out of courtesy, but a lot of Joe's same-age friends do it as well. I assume this is because the audience largely does it too, but in World, I find myself questioning why he doesn't enforce the Just Joe rule with all of his friends and love interests. At any rate, Joe remains the youngest child dealing with all the youngest child difficulties right up until the introduction of one Jamie Hunter Cartwright in season 12. Perhaps in an effort to get back to the three-son dynamic that they started with and then lost in season 6 through the permanent departure of Adam, Ben gains another son when he adopts Jamie, a teenager who is without parents of his own. This development pushes Joe to a new spot as the middle child and pushes Hoss straight up to the eldest son. For some fans, myself included, it may take some getting used to seeing Joe sandwiched between an older and a younger brother and no longer being the baby of the family. Mike does a great job with what they gave him, and Joe seems to empathize with Jamie's role and takes him under his wing. The fact that Hoss and Joe retain their big brother-little brother relationship despite the change is what really makes it work. By this point in the series, fans are here for the Joe Hoss moments, so it's essential that we still get them. That being the case, the final and most difficult shift takes place in season 14 in a shock that radiates all the way through the very fabric of the show, when, in what would become the final season, Hoss Cartwright, Dan Blocker, passes away, leaving Joe to be the eldest Cartwright son, with only Jamie below him. This final stage in Joe's evolution is the one we see the least, as it only lasts the one season. Again, Mike Landon does his best, and he is the only reason why it works so well. In preparation for Mike to take on the next role he would perform as Charles Ingalls on Little House on the Prairie, he is now put in a position to lead and guide Jamie as the oldest sibling. Of course, all of this is said while also keeping in mind that Adam is still alive, but as he is not on the Ponderosa and never actually meets Jamie, we're calling Joe the eldest at this point as far as show canon is concerned. The biggest hit to the show was the loss of its teddy bear Hoss, and I think the reason why it went downhill so fast was because the famous relationship between Joe and Hoss was no longer there and could never be replicated. Fans might have wanted to keep Joe in the little brother section and were no longer able to do that. Could the show have lasted had they never had Jamie at all, thereby ending up with the only Cartwrights being Ben and Joe to keep it going until season 14? What I will say for now is that I don't think Joe being an only child would work nearly as well as having him as a brother at one of these prior discussed positions, youngest, middle, or eldest. True, 
Ben and Joe's relationship was always one of the best in the show, and that dynam dynamic in and of itself would have been fine. But Joe needed to be a brother after we had already been used to seeing him as not an only child. Having no one to be playful with or protective of would have been a serious injury to his character, in my opinion. Whether or not having Jamie be that brother who kept Joe from being an only child after Hoss died really worked or not? Well, we'll talk about that when we get to my Jamie video. One thing that this shift in roles works to showcase is that little Joe Cartwright grew from a carefree teenager to a responsible, strong leader with a few growing pains in between on his journey from boy to man. He had moments of self-doubt and moments of feeling like no one believed in his potential. He grew through experiences, and I believe learned more lessons than any other character on the show. For this reason, I believe that Joe Cartwright had the most complete character arc in Bonanza. Of course, they all went through some changes from who they were in Season 1, and that was for the best, and that also makes for great character development. Out of all of them, Joe went through the most and some of that is by design, while some was through unforeseen circumstances in the real-life progression of the show's run. Through it all, Michael Landon displayed his talents as an actor, and it paved the way for two more successful shows in both of which he was a leader. Which of Joe's roles is your favorite? Do you think he came into his own as an older brother, or do you prefer him as the wild kid of the family? No matter what, I think we can all agree that no one could have done it better than Michael Landon.